This is lesson 221. We're still in the transformation of parent graphs and we're going to take a look at the other parent graphs. So we need to know the parent graphs for common functions and also understand how the parameters interact with them. So we're just going to go through the list. There's going to be a total of seven, but we're just going to focus on six of them for now. And there are going to be some important features that we need to go into them. Now notice, we should write this down. And on top of that, it's in gold, which means we should memorize these as flashcards. So I give two things in this information. This is the parent graph, and this is the picture of the parent graph. And that just means nothing's being done to it. So we should already know the parabola. There's the parabola, x squared. It starts at 0, 0. Nothing's being done to it. That's the shape. And then this is how the parameters a, h, and k interact with it. a is still our vertical stretching and shrinking reflection. h is always our horizontal shift. And k is always our vertical shift. Now, the moment that we change that into a cube instead of a square, we call that a cubic function. And that's its characteristic, cubic function. It still starts at 0, 0, and it has that shape. Now, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like half parabolas, right? I mean, if you were going to draw the curvature, it's not a half parabola, but it's, I mean, it's a way to remember it. Then we have a radical function or a square root function. And that's the shape, still starts at 0, 0. And it has that shape that goes from it. That's the direction. It still has h and k, which are a horizontal shift. And then that's the parent function for it when nothing's being done. Our absolute value function, it has this v shape. It still starts at 0, 0. We still, the way that we know it's an absolute value. So if I see absolute value immediately, I need to be thinking about this V shape. Still has the parameters A, H, and K. If you notice, A, H, and K, it's in all of these. So if we just memorize what the shape is, the A, H, and K take care of itself with how it's going to be shifting around. Then we have a rational function and exponential. So this is where it starts getting just a little bit weirder. With the rational, and we kind of looked at this already, we have these asymptotes. Well, our h and k, it's nothing here. So we imagine our, if we imagine this like crosshairs, and that's where the starting point is, is at 0, 0 with the crosshairs. And so as our h and k change, that moves the crosshairs. And like I said, we're not practicing them just yet. As we practice it, it should make more sense. Exponential, it does not start at 0, 0. It starts at 0, 1. That is a very important distinction. It does not start at 0, 0. It starts at 0, 1. We need to make that distinction as we work through this. And so we started at 0, 1. And then from there, it does that shifting. And the other piece to that, there's an asymptote here at y equals 0. And that asymptote will shift up or down with your graph. And then the last is a log. But like I said, we're not going to look at that until later. There's parentheses around that. We're not going to look at that until later. But it also doesn't start at 0, 0. It starts at 1, 0. But like I said, once we introduce logs, we're going to talk about logs. You've never seen a log before, which is why we're not going to go too much into it. So if we look at how we apply h and k to some of these. So if I said x cubed, right, there's my parent function, starts at 0, 0. So if I wanted to move that four spaces to the left, that means my h is negative 4. So x minus negative 4, which is x plus 4. So that's going to be s plus 4 cubed. Now that means that this is just going to move four spaces to the left. The shape's the same. I mean, it's cut off a little bit here because we're trying to fit it on the graph, but the shape's exactly the same. What if I wanted to move two spaces up? So that's x cubed plus 2. My k is positive 2. And so from here, that starting point is just going to move up two spaces. The shape is the same. 
What if I wanted to do two to the right and down three? So two to the right and down three. So it's gonna end up being there. So that's x minus two cubed minus three. All I did was just take this picture, that starting point that's zero, zero, shifted it over two, shifted it down three, drew that shape, and bam, you have your function. One to the left and two up. So it's gonna shift over one to the left and move two up. Square roots, same thing. If I wanted to shift it four to the left and two down, so that's the square root of x plus four minus two, because my h is negative, so negative, negative is positive, and that's two down, so that's minus two. So this is gonna move four to the left and down two. So it started here, moved four to the left, down two, and then you just draw that shape. So here's my absolute value function. If I had two to the right and one up, so two to the right and one up. So it starts at zero, zero, two to the right and one up. My rational function, three to the right and two down. So remember the H is in the bottom here and then there's my K. So this cross here is gonna move three spaces over and two spaces down. So notice the crosshairs, three spaces over, two spaces down. And so then we have our function there. So let's practice. I need to recognize what my parent function is. So it's gonna start at zero, zero, and it's gonna have that shape. That's what a rational function looks like. My h, it's gonna move over two spaces to the left, and it's gonna move one down. So two to the left and one down. And that's good enough. I mean, it's probably not ultra accurate, but it's good enough for right now. We're just drawing a sketch of what it needs to look like. Next one, absolute value. I know it's supposed to start at zero one. It has an asymptote here and it has that shape. That's my parent graph. And so from there, so this starting point here, that's gonna move over four spaces, one, two, three, four, and down one. So it moved over four spaces down one. My asymptote normally is at zero. That also moves down one space. And so there is my function. So what did we learn today? We talked about the parent functions of other standard functions. And we examined the standard form and we looked at the parent functions of it. Please, we need to memorize these. You're gonna see these functions for the rest of the class, and if you have these memorized, that is a good 10 or 20% on all the tests. You got to have these memorized. It makes the rest of everything easier. And so what are the parameters of the function? Remember that H is the horizontal shift, K is the vertical shift, and A affects the vertical stretching and shrinking, including the reflection. And then what does the parent function of a rational look like? So remember, if that's our x and y graph, it's going to have asymptotes at y equals zero and x equals zero. And it's gonna have that shape. That's the image that needs to pop into your head when you think rational function. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.